I just got my first footage with the Mavic 2 Pro and I have to tell you guys, I am superbly impressed. That is like maybe a hundred times better than the Mavic Pro. Don't get me wrong, I love my Mavic Pro. It was my first drone and I'm always gonna love it. But this one inch sensor is incredible. If you guys are on the fence, if any of you watching this are on the fence, whether to get the Zoom or the Pro, and if you're interested in photography, videography and things like that, definitely get the Mavic 2 Pro. Now I know in the future you're gonna have the ability to swap cameras. So if you get the Pro, eventually you can get the Zoom camera, but I'm guessing that's not gonna be very cheap. So get the Pro, that one inch sensor, the image quality is just far and above anything I've ever gotten with my Mavic Pro or my Mavic Air. All right, enough pining on about the Mavic 2 Pro. Today what I'm gonna talk about in this video is the DJI Go4 app. Now I did a video a couple years ago on the Go4 app for the Mavic Pro, but things have changed quite a bit since then, and it's a little bit different for the Mavic 2 Pro. And so I'm gonna do a whole new video on it today. Now, to keep this video relatively short, I'm not gonna cover every single thing on there because some things warrant their own detailed video, like camera settings, uh, the A-Pass, the intelligent flight modes, the attitude indicator, and a few other things. And so I'm gonna cover the majority of the DJI Go4 app, but if something deserves its own video, I'll eventually put it in the note cards up here. Quick tip for you guys, if I'm speaking too quickly in this video or in any of my other videos, you can always slow it down just a little bit by hitting the shift and less than key on your keyboard, which is also the comma key. Or if you need to speed something up, hit the shift and greater than key. Just a little tip for you guys, if any video that you're watching on YouTube is going too fast, you can always slow it down a little bit. And it's also kind of fun to play with sometimes because it makes people sound like they've been having a little bit too much fun. <laughs> All right, so that's enough jabbering. Let's get into the DJI Go4 app. Hey, first of all, thanks for stopping by the channel. If this is your first time here, this is 51 Drones and my name is Russ. Feel free to click on the subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. So let's get right into the DJI Go4 app. Now this is as of September, 2018. So just so you know, DJI updates the Go4 app every so often. So this might look a little bit different in the future. As changes are made, I will describe them in the description below. So if you're watching this at a later date, be sure to check the description first. And also as major changes are made to the app, I'll make a specific video for those. So I'm gonna cover these in a left to right, top to bottom pattern. At the top left of the screen, you're gonna see the DJI logo. If you click on that, it simply brings you to the start screen. Here's where you're gonna see the DJI editor, which I've actually never used, as well as Sky Pixel, which has some great user submissions of photos and videos. And finally, you're gonna see an icon for your account information. Next, you're gonna see the systems status bar. This will let you know of any issues that need to be fixed. It's gonna tell you if it's in Addy mode or GPS mode. What you wanna see here is green and the words ready to go GPS. Now, if you click on that, it's gonna bring up your aircraft status. This is a snapshot of all of the functions of your Mavic 2. It's a very important screen to get to know as it's gonna inform you about everything. Any warnings or problems that need to be addressed will be on this screen. Okay, next you're gonna see the icon that looks like a little quadcopter. Go ahead and click on that and this is gonna be your flight mode settings or your MC settings. And the first thing that you'll see is remote identification. Now I still personally have a lot to learn about this, so I'm not gonna go over that right now, but I'll address it in a future quick tips video. Next thing you're gonna see is the home point settings and this is where you can set your return to home. Now you can set the return to home to the current aircraft location, which is usually set right before your launch, or you can set the return to home to controller location. But just keep in mind, if you set the return to home to controller location, that's gonna set wherever you are at that time. So just keep that in mind. I think it's always safest to set the return to home to current aircraft location and you set it before you launch. And right underneath that is enable dynamic home point. And what this is for is if you're using the active tracking mode and you want your drone to periodically update the return to home. And so if you're traveling, you're following a car or a bicycle or motorcycle or something like that, and you want your Mavic 2 to update the return to home every so often, 
So if it does happen to return to home, it's not gonna be so far away from you. It's not gonna go back to that original launch point. It's gonna be just a little bit of ways from where you are. Directly below that is where you enable the intelligent flight modes. And I would always have this on because otherwise you're not gonna be able to use the sport mode or the tripod mode. Right under that is the return to home altitude. And you wanna make sure that this is set above the highest object wherever you are flying. And so if you're flying in a new location that you've never been before, make sure you know what the highest point is in the nearest vicinity. And so if your drone ever has to come back, it's gonna be above that point. Beginner mode, which limits the distance, the elevation, and the speed of your drone to allow you to get used to flying. Now I actually didn't find any value in this when I first started flying. I actually used the tripod mode and I flew out in open areas to get better at maneuvering my drone. Next, you can set the maximum altitude, which in the United States currently is limited by the FAA to 400 feet above ground level. So just leave that at 120 meters, which is about 394 feet. Next, you can set the distance limit. I've actually never turned that on. At the bottom, you're gonna see advanced settings. Now this is where you can adjust the input settings for how your Mavic 2 responds to the controller inputs. I posted a video about these in summer of 2018 for the Mavic Pro. I'll put it up here in the note cards if you wanna check it out, but I'm still trying to figure out if those settings apply to the Mavic 2. Once I figure it out, I will post a video telling you all about my findings. So I won't cover these here. Just keep watching for a dedicated video on those. As you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see the sensors state. This lets you know how your IMU and your compass is doing. If anything is red, you may have to calibrate either of those for best performance. Billy Kyle has a great video on IMU calibration if you ever need to do that. I'll put that video right up here in the note cards if you wanna check it out. Next, you will see the cinematic mode settings. This is actually one of the intelligent flight modes and you can adjust the settings for that right here. For now, I'm just gonna leave those at the default until I experiment more with the cinematic mode. After that, you're gonna see RC signal lost setting. I always have this set to return to home. Unless I'm flying from my boat, then I'll set it to hover and hopefully I can get my boat back to where it's at before it runs out of battery and takes a swim. Right below that is the turn on aircraft arm LEDs. Leave these on all the time, unless you're taking some photos in low light or at night or something like that, and they're causing some glare at the edges of your photos. Next is the emergency stop mode. This is how you would stop the motors in case of an emergency, like if it stops responding to you, or you see an aircraft approaching and you can't give way quickly enough to avoid a disaster, then move the sticks in this manner and your drone will drop out of the sky. There's two options here, but I just leave mine set to the default. So let's back out and the next icon on the screen at the top is the GPS signal strength indicator. As long as the bars are white, you have a GPS signal. Right now I have about 16 of them locked on, which is average. If it gets below a certain number, which I think it's like seven or less, your drone's gonna go into Addy mode, which is not a happy time because then you'll have to fly the old fashioned way without GPS. Next we have the visions systems status. Just by looking at it here, you can see that my forward and my backwards obstacle avoidance is operational and the sideways ones are not. Sideways obstacle avoidance only works in active tracking or tripod mode so far. I'm wondering if it's possible this is something they could update in the future. But when you click on that, it will bring you to the settings screen where you can adjust all of the different vision settings. The first one will show you what each status looks like. The majority of the time, it will look like the middle one. If you have active tracking or tripod mode on, then the entire circle will be green. Next, you'll see the option to toggle the forwards and backwards obstacle avoidance on or off. I recommend never turning this off. That drone is just worth way too much and it's not worth the risk. Keep in mind that if you do fly in sport mode, the obstacle avoidance is disengaged, so be careful. Next is the display radar chart. Leave this on as well because it will let you know that an obstacle is near and approximately how far away it is from the drone. Here is the bottom auxiliary lighting. On auto, it will turn those bottom LEDs on as it's landing in low light conditions. If you toggle it on, they'll be on all the time and so on. The advanced vision settings will bring up a couple more settings. Two of them have to do with landing. Leave them on at all times, unless you're gonna be hand catching your Mavic 2 then you will need to disengage the landing protection first so it doesn't try to get away from you as you attempt to catch it. Finally is the return to home obstacle detection. I don't know why you would ever turn this off. If your drone wants to come home by itself, I would hope that you want it to automatically avoid any obstacles. Next we have the remote controller setting screen. Here you can calibrate the remote controller if it feels like your Mavic 2 is not responding like it should. The drone has to be off to do this. 
Next is the remote LCD screen, which is a great screen because it shows you what everything means on your LCD screen. Like I said in my first Mavic 2 video, this is important to know because if your mobile device ever quits on you or you lose connection for some reason, you will need to use the information on that controller LCD screen to fly. The next setting is the stick mode. Now the default is mode two. Don't change this because it's the most intuitive and there's a reason that it's the default. Next, you will see the option to change the functions of the C1 and C2 buttons on the back of the controller. Now, this is one of those things that will be on another future video because it deserves its very own. But very quickly, I have mine currently set to camera settings for C1 and camera forward down for C2. Below that is the 5D button setting of which a detailed description I will include in the C1 and C2 button video. Once again, once I get that video completed, it'll pop up in the note cards right here. The next icon on the screen is the image transmission settings. As for the channel, just leave it on dual. The drone will pick the best one. Also leave the channel mode on auto. When you click on image transmission state, you will see the strength of the signal that's between your mobile device and your Mavic 2. As far as image transmission mode, you can choose regular or HD. Now, when I used HD today, my signal became very pixelated. I'm guessing it really depends on your mobile device. I think it would be really cool to have that cast video on my phone be in 1080p, but for now, I can't do it. So back to the main screen, and the next icon will bring up the battery status. It shows you everything you need to know about that battery that is currently on the drone. You can toggle the smart return to home off and on. Just leave that on, you guys, because you want the drone to come back when the battery gets too low. You can set the percentage of battery remaining for the Mavic 2 to remind you that you should bring it home. And here you can see the flight time, which is nice to have a record of. And finally, you can toggle the voltage to show on the main screen, which I do. You can also check the details of the battery, like when it was made and how many times it's been charged. Next, right over here, you're gonna see three little dots. Now this is gonna bring up your general settings screen. Here's where you can change whether to see your numbers in Imperial or metric. You can choose whichever live stream platform you wanna use if you plan to live stream your drone footage as you're flying, which I've actually never done, and I think that would be pretty cool to do. I might try it with my Mavic 2. You can cast the video stream directly to your phone, and you can also record the audio if you want. You can save the cache to your SD card, and you can set the maximum size of that cast footage to save. If you want it to automatically delete the footage as more is stored, then you toggle this on or you can manually empty the cache if you want to. Here you can change the name of your Mavic 2, and this here changes how you view full screen mode. You can use one finger or two fingers. And the last one is just general information about your drone. Now, the only icon that we haven't been to here is the gimbal settings, and that's this one right here that looks like a little camera. And once you open that up, you can see you can choose the FPV mode or the follow mode. Now, most of the time you're gonna have this in follow mode. If you put it in FPV mode, it's gonna fly like a fixed wing aircraft. And if you're not used to that, it's kind of hard uh, to figure it out. But I usually keep that in follow mode. Right underneath that is camera gimbal advanced settings. And this is where you can change your gimbal pitch speed, your smoothness, and your pitch limit. Now, this is another one of those things that I'm not gonna address in this video, but I will make a video on these later. If you touch that gimbal forward down button, that's gonna face your camera gimbal forward and straight down. Right underneath that is the adjust gimbal, and this is where you can make minor adjustments to your gimbal in case it's off horizon a little bit. And also the auto calibrate gimbal works if your horizon looks a little bit off level. Now, right below that top line, you're gonna see all of the current camera settings. Like I said, I will be doing a dedicated video about these as I gain more experience with them so I can provide you guys with the best information possible. Now on the left hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the launch icon, the return to home icon, and the intelligent flight modes, and finally the A pass button to engage the advanced pilot assistance system. Again, the intelligent flight modes and the A pass system are both things that need to have dedicated videos, so watch for those. Now over on the right hand side, you will see the button to choose photo mode or video mode, and below that is the shutter slash record button, and underneath that is the camera settings button. This is where you adjust the video settings, the photo settings, and the general camera settings. Once I get the video posted about those things, you'll see it pop right up here in the note card. At the bottom of the DJI Go4 app screen, you're gonna see all of the flight telemetry, like distance from the controller to the drone, current height above launch height, the horizontal speed and vertical speed, and finally the vision positioning distance. If there's an obstacle in front of the drone, it will put up the radar and let you know approximately how far away that obstacle is. On the bottom right is this little arrow. That brings up your playback screen 
where you can view all of the videos or photos you have stored on your Mavic 2. So there you have it, the DJI Go For app for the Mavic 2. Now I know I didn't cover some things like camera settings, gimbal and expo settings, intelligent flight modes, A pass and the attitude indicator. But if you wanna see those, be sure to subscribe because I'm gonna do all of them. I really like my videos to provide as much information as possible in the shortest amount of time possible. And so that's why I'm breaking this up into multiple videos. Hey, if you guys got anything of value out of this video, be sure to click on that thumbs up button. Down in the comments, let me know what your favorite subject is to film with your drone. Or if you don't have one yet, what would be your favorite subject to film or photograph with your drone. Now I love to film everything, but at the top of my list are trains and lakes. So it'd be kind of fun to see what you guys like to shoot. Thanks to all of you for watching today. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.